I would like to show you why you should not use generative fill, why you should actually just use Photoshop brushes to create more foliage. Now, in doing this, I'm just going to demonstrate what a crap job generative fill does if you want to add foliage. So as always, I'm in Photoshop beta and I'm just going to make a general selection over the area that I want to affect. Okay, so let's say we wanted to add more foliage here. Well, in the generative um, description, we would put green foliage with bokeh because we want that blur, right? And let's just see what this will come up with. I'm telling you I've done it a few times and it's just crap. So let's take a look. All right, so that doesn't look like any green foliage, does it? What's the next one? And no green foliage. Next one. Oh, look, it extended these branches. Isn't that pretty? I actually don't mind that one, but it's still not anything close to what I wanted. So let's try a different prompt. Like we could regenerate it again, but it's obviously not getting the whole point of what we're asking for. So let's go ahead and just make another selection and try a different prompt. Green bushes with bokeh. And it looks like we're getting kind of the same thing. So even though we selected that whole area, as you can see in here, it's really, it's really not doing anything. It's just not. So let's go over to regular Photoshop because I don't have any of my normal display or anything set up in beta because I don't use it. So my, my work platform is totally different and I need to be in the real Photoshop. So as you can see, this is straight out of the camera. We still have um, our smart object from Adobe Camera Raw in here, and I haven't actually done really any tweaks or anything, but this is how I typically will do it. So I'm just going to add a new layer like so, and I'm going to go into my brushes palette and I'm going to go into my general and I'm going to come down here to a bunch of foliage brushes. Okay. So I'm going to use, and you can download any foliage brushes directly from Adobe. So make sure you do that. And there's literally thousands of them. So I'm going to use, so this is just a tree foliage brush. And all I do is I choose my color. So usually my first layer is darker, but for this one, because it's going to be kind of facing the light we're going to actually choose a much lighter color make my brush bigger and i'm just going to tap oh so gently i'm going to make my brush bigger for this and i'm just adding a little bit kind of like that okay and actually i'm going to leave this layer how it is it's not typically how i do it but i am going to leave it i'm going to come up to blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to blur that out because I want to match the bokeh right so that's a little bit much so just find it so where you can still see the shapes click OK all right so now I'm going to come up and I'm going to do a another layer like so but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it so I'm going to just hold alter option and put my cursor between these two layers and I'm just going to clip it. All right. So now it's clipped, which is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a darker color, something like that, but I'm also going to reduce my flow and I'm going to come in and just tap again. And by clipping it, it's not going to allow this particular brush to go any further then the very outer reaches. And I don't want to go right to the edge at all because I want to maintain the highlights on the edges as if that was sunlight. So we're just going something like this, little taps, little dabble, do ya? So something like that, which is good. And we're clipping it so that it's an individual layer so that we can add the blur as well if we want to. Now I'm going to 
choose a darker color and come in and just do the same thing. And this is just adding some dimension using different tones of the exact same color. So essentially we're trying to match the tones and the highlights over here. Okay, so something like this, maybe get in a little bit darker on the edges in here. And I'm just doing one simple tap. I'm not rubbing it, I'm not moving it, I'm just tapping. And now we're gonna go even darker, come in and do the same thing, little taps. And this just adds dimension and depth. Okay, now I'm gonna go click on the background layer, do a new one underneath, and I'm gonna make my brush even darker, and I'm just gonna fill it in underneath that first brightening layer because I don't really want a lot of highlights showing up underneath. So something like this. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, now we're going to click on the background layer again. I'm actually going to create a new layer and change the blend mode to multiply and just grab a regular soft brush right about here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my brush color by sampling this area here and you can see that it's got kind of a ready ruddy color to it which is fine but I'm going to sample the green and come in like this And all this is going to do is just give me the ability to darken this down and make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, now we're just going to reduce the opacity of this group. As soon as Photoshop catches up with me. Okay, so just reduce it down to about probably here, which is good. So before and after, so it's less bright. And now we're gonna come back up to this one here and we're gonna add the same Gaussian blur, but probably just a smidge less because it's a little closer to us. All right, let's just reduce that to about 10. See where we're at. Right about there is not too bad. Okay, so about 12. And then for the dark under layer, we're just going to click the last Gaussian blur that we used and we're going to blur that out. Alrighty. So this is our base. And as you can see, that was super quick and very, very easy. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click above this. So a new layer. And I'm going to choose this dark, dark green and go back to my... Um, my foliage brush and 50% is pretty good but we do know that these are now going to be way darker for the shadows facing us just like these so just tapping and as you can see this brush just moves all over the place it changes its direction so you don't have the same exact shape going down every time okay so that's pretty good and I'm actually going to choose a mid-tone and just kind of go over the highlights a little bit more they're a little too big so just over top like so might even put a little bit like this okay same thing we're going to come in and gaussian blur it okay so that's our base bush layer let's just place them in a group all by themselves and now we're going to start with a different brush and for this one i'm going to use it's kind of like a leaf brush and i'll show you what it does i'm going to choose a 
a little bit cooler green, so more in the grays. And if I go like this, you can see that it creates leaves. But this is actually the wrong shape of leaf, so I don't want those. So let's grab a different one. I think it might be this one. Let's try this one. And what I like about using foliage brushes is they're pretty directional. So like you can come in here and just add whatever direction. So you see with my stylus, I'm moving it kind of up now and it just adds in leaves. And these leaves, you can actually create them to be smaller or bigger by adjusting your brush and this one obviously has some color mix in, into it but I do really like how these end up looking and then you're going to come in and do some Gaussian blur but for this one we're going to fine tune it for these particular leaves so this was 12 right I'm going to increase it to about 14 so right about there looks good and that's fine and the next thing that I typically do is I choose a soft normal brush and all I do is grab my soft brush and I put my flow down to around 8% and I just grab that light color and do tiny little circles and kind of blend that all in with softness. It'll just help, you know, make it look more ethereal and soft. I'm gonna add a little bit more mid-tones down here also over here where the blacks look like they're a little bit more clipped. Okay. So far, super easy, right? So the next one that we're going to do is going to go back down to our general foliage brushes and I'm going to use this leaf brush here and you can see these little purple flowers here so basically what I like to do is come in and add my own little purple flowers and you can just come in and do it like this change the size of your brush but if you come in and do this Actually, we're going to go into the brush settings and we're going to turn off color dynamics because I don't want it to change colors. I just want this lavender kind of purpley color. And then you can come and do a little bit darker, more saturated, like so. And then come up and do way lighter, reduce the size of your brush and add a few along the edge. So if we do that and then we come up to blur, Gaussian blur, we can really blur that out because really we just want the suggestion of color okay click okay and then you can do your global exposure color adjustments let's say we pull the midtones down something like that invert that mask and then you can come in and just grabbing a regular soft brush you can come in and just kind of darken that down so it blends a little bit better 
with the image. But yeah, don't use generative fill. Use your own skills and talents that you've created to create something. Here's another one that I did. This is a full edit. So you can see this image and I'll show you what it looked like when I opened it up. This is what it looked like before and this is my finished edit. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.